it's morning. <clears throat> you know, every day I see people explaining salvation or the gospel in some different or unique way that they come up with some four-step plan or some ten-step or the Roman road or the Billy Graham procedures or the Greg Lorries or the Billy Sundays or the D.L. Moody's or the you name it. There's always some way of explaining what Jesus said and trying to explain what it means to become born again. There's the woman at the well. There's all these different scriptures that are given, whether it be that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. All is in fall short of the glory of God. There's the Roman road. There's Jesus, you know, telling people that, you know, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door and come in, I'll have something with him. Be with me. And you've heard all the scriptures before. You've known that there are four spiritual laws. Are there really? They don't know. <laughs> That's just something somebody made up. But the point of it all is, is that people care enough to try to share with you and me the reality that they experienced. Somehow, in some way, and in the early days of the Jesus movement, most, or I should say a lot of people, believe it or not, were stoned or were on drugs when they met Jesus and got saved or had some encounter with God. Somewhere at some point in time, someone confronted them with the reality. And that reality was Jesus. Now, Jesus said, no man can come to the Father but by me. And after that, it's really a matter of you have to come into contact with Jesus. Because the gospel is always presented as a salvation from hell. And it's always presented as you are a sinner. Which those are two truths and facts that no man come to the Father but by me, Jesus said. But the reality of the salvation story doesn't end there, and it's not a simple, let's run up, have a big concert, you know, and get saved. Because only you and Jesus are going to know if you're saved or not. And sometimes we make it too complicated to be saved. Sometimes we make it too much of a procedure, and people get their emotions worked up, and they think they're saved, or they don't know if they're saved, and they don't know what they're doing, and they don't know how to do it, and they don't know whatever. It's simpler than that. Jesus loves you. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus loves you. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if at that moment you need help, just call out to Jesus. You don't need to wait for an altar call. You don't need to have a major concert. That just helps to confirm it. It's like baptism, you know? If you want to get baptized and cleaned up, cool. Go when it's time. Go to an altar call when it's time. But in the meantime, right now, today, just ask God, if you're real, God, if you're real, if you're real, God, Talk to me, save me, help me. Show me the way so that I could be saved and know I'm saved. Or put my name in the book of life or whatever you want to call it. But show me Jesus so that I can make a decision to follow him or not. Because the blunt truth is if you follow Jesus, you'll be saved. If you don't follow Jesus, you're going to hell. And hell is a lake of fire in the end, so people will argue about whether there's a hell or not. And that's all really complicated, but the fact is the scripture is teaching. Jesus said it, so you're dealing with Jesus. If you get confused, talk to Jesus, because God loves you enough that he gave his son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. It doesn't mean you won't perish. It means you shouldn't perish, because if you go to Jesus, he's going to explain it for you. He's going to show you the scriptures. He's going to help you come to a place where you make an intelligent, conscious decision between your life or his life because you've lived your own way and you know what you're doing. You've messed it up. you learning the hard way. Or you can learn Jesus' way. It ain't going to be easy. It's not a bed of roses. It's not something that you can say, oh, well, now I'm delivered from all my sins. Guess what? You're still going to sin. So somehow somebody may be confused you with that one. But you're going to be forgiven. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be changed. You're going to have something that maybe they didn't tell you, which is called being born of the Spirit. You're going to become a new quote-unquote, kind of being, you know, kind of way of living, kind of way of knowing something that you can't know. Because as soon as you ask God to show you Jesus, just simply say, God, help me. I need Jesus. 
then God will begin to work in your life to bring you to a place where you ask God to take over your life. And if you do, God will. And then if you ask Jesus into your life, he will come. And he will show you his Father. And then he'll begin to show you the way. Now, that will include, you know, going where people can help you to instruct you in the way of righteousness, which is the church. And they'll probably help you to say a prayer and go there. And you'll probably already know the Lord a little bit, you know, and then you'll go, oh, well, I know the Lord better now. And then you'll gradually get to where you already knew the Lord and you'll be realizing that God saved you. And wow, that's cool, you know. And some moment in time, maybe you'll feel gaga about it, you know, and go Google. But the point is, start today. Be saved right now just by simply saying, God, I don't know. This Christian stuff's pretty confusing and this religion stuff's even worse, but if you're really there, God, I'm just asking you to help me get there. And that's what you need from Jesus. Just ask him to be real in your life. All the rest is just sometimes a spiritual mess, sometimes a religious mess. But you shall be saved because God loves you. And you might wind up in hell if you don't do something about it. So the reality is, the gospel is simply this. The Father, God, loves you so much that he wants you to be with him. And he gave away that you could. But you have to talk to Jesus about it. And you have to do what he says. That's it in a nutshell. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Yeah, it's going to be kind of a religious thing. And yeah, you're going to probably do some things you're not comfortable with. And yeah, he's going to help you every step of the way. But he said you will have to deny yourself and then literally take up your cross and follow him. So whatever he's telling you to do, just do it today. Don't wait. You know, you don't have to make some big show of it or, you know, run around like a screaming lunatic. But just start to begin to learn what God wants for you. Learn that it's not a purpose-driven, God-driven, or any driven life, but that it's God, Jesus, and you. It's your Father who loves you, it's His Son who's helping you, and it's His Spirit that's going to come inside you and, and show you the way you should go. Just learn about God. Just learn about Jesus. It's all about Him. It really was not about you. It's about Him saving you and helping you when you really need it. I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn you. We are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and his own grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Thine eyes did see that my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and set his Son to be the propitiation for our sin. God took care of the mess. All you need to do is accept the rest. Now, along the way you'll learn, but just call. Just ask. Just seek and just find. Jesus isn't making it hard. and He's not making you blind. He's just asking you to come, just as you are. Yes, you will change. And yes, you have to make a decision. But once you do, try it. If you change your mind later, hey, turn your back on God if you want to. But I don't think you will. I think you'll find that it's a lot better to be with God than against him. I have made, and I will bear. Thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. Even to your old age, I am he, and even to white hairs will I carry you. As an eagle stirs up her nest, fluttering over her young, spread at the broader winds and takes them and bears them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him. He bare them and carried them all the days of old. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. 
For I am persuaded that neither height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your children, your church, your pastor, your elder, your deacon, your prophet, your priest, whatever it may be, may forsake you. But you know, I'm telling you the truth about the gospel. It's simpler than you think. Just call upon the name of the Lord, and ye shall be saved. Because there was a woman in the desert who just said, God killed me, so I don't have to watch my child die. And God heard her and saved her. Just call upon Jesus. That's all you need to do. Just call upon Him.